How's it going everybody? Long time no see. My name is Emily and welcome back to my channel where I review, critique, and summarize scary children's books. So what's up everybody? I have been gone for so long. It is not of my own will. <laughs> Honestly, it's just because my life has gone crazy. It's like if I'm not working on one project, two other projects pop up, and then I work on those projects and three other projects pop up, and it's just been crazy. I've been working all the time and honestly just have not had a lot of time to read. But happily, I have amazing friends who want to do buddy reads with me. Shout out to Alex from Hey Little Thrifter. Super excited to be making a review on the book that we read. And I'm hoping to do a lot more reading here in the future. Hopefully my life will calm down just a little bit. I don't know what it is making me so busy these days. So the book that I'm going to be doing a book talk on today is The Rust Maidens by Gwendolyn Keist. In this video, I'm going to summarize the book for you, followed by a bit of a book talk. I'll let you know what I think of the story and the characters, etc. And finally, I'll let you know what my personal scores for this book are. So I always rate books based on writing and language, story, it's been a while since I've done this, writing and language, story, scares, and my personal score. So stick around until the end of the video if you want to see those. So The Rust Maidens takes place in Cleveland, Ohio in the 80s as well as in the present day, and our main character Phoebe grew up in Cleveland on Denton Street, a cul-de-sac neighborhood that is right beside a mill that employs all of the fathers on the street. The story begins with Phoebe hesitantly returning to Denton Street after many years away, after something that happened on the year of her high school graduation that drove her away from Denton Street for most of her life. The year of Phoebe's high school graduation, a number of girls on the street started undergoing a mysterious transformation that turned their bones into rust and metal. This unusual disease or transformation descends the neighborhood into chaos with gossipy neighbors and working fathers all being very confused as to what is actually going on. The book tells the story of these transforming rust maidens through Phoebe's point of view both as a teenager and as an adult. And as the mystery begins to unravel it becomes clear that everything Phoebe knows and loves is going to change along with the rust maidens. All right, so first things first, The Rust Maidens is a crossover book. So although I'm going to be talking about it in terms of YA, when I read it, it felt very much YA to me. I think a lot of readers would enjoy this and think of it as an adult book as well. It's one of those books that just kind of sits in the middle of that Venn diagram. Gwendolyn Keist's writing, I think, is very good. It's very rich in the way that a lot of YA prose is. I found it to be very lyrical and easy to read. I enjoyed it. I especially liked the writing in the first half of the story. Generally, I think the first half is the stronger portion of the story, and this is something that Alex and I kind of agreed on when we talked about it. During the setup, there's something that really pulls you into the story and makes you want to know what the hell is happening. Something amazing that I thought Keist did really well was to introduce a huge cast of characters in the first 50 or so pages and have them all seem very clear and you're able to remember them. It's an entire neighborhood that she introduces, so I think that was really well done. As the story progressed, I felt like I knew these characters, even though there were so many of them. The story itself is so interesting, and it makes use of one of my favorite themes in fiction, in movies, in everything, and that is bodily transformation and what it means for the Transformer, as well as those that witness the transformation. The book deals with it really well, especially when we get into the people that are not transforming, the people that are just witnessing these girls change, and the people in the neighborhood are all all dealing it with, with it in a different way and in ways that are not good. Parents and people try to make decisions for these girls, even when they're not transforming. The gossipy neighbors of this neighborhood all try to make everything everybody else's business. I found the way the adults in the story were trying to curate these girls' experiences to be very nefarious and unsettling and honestly true to life. And I think you can apply this story to a lot of commentary, whether it be coming of age, having a changing body, societal expectations, etc. Sadly, towards the second half of the book, things started to lose a bit of steam. Things just stopped being quite as visceral, and I stopped connecting as much with the descriptions and the story, and things weren't nearly as tense and suspenseful as they were in the first half. And the mystery itself didn't end up being revealed in a way that I found satisfying, or in a way that I felt made sense. It just doesn't seem to have any direction, it just kind of unravels. 
In terms of scary stuff, I think this is a great scary story in a lot of ways. That theme of transformation again, as well as themes of monstrosity and what makes these girls other. There's a lot of body horror, meaning that the transformation itself is seemingly painful and seemingly horrible. And there's actually a lot of ghostly imagery as well. The idea that these girls in some ways are invisible. This ghostly imagery of losing oneself bit by bit. So I think as a horror novel this book really succeeds and uses a lot of great stuff that horror fans will enjoy. My favorite part of the book was actually the main character, Phoebe. I connected quite a bit with her and her emotional arc. Even though the last half of the story seemed to lose steam a little bit for me, I found that I, with the main character I remained invested until the very last page. So my experience with this book was a strong one, even though I don't know if the plot was super strong in the end. It's just something about her character arc that really hit home for me, so that was really nice. So with all of that in mind, I'm going to give The Rust Maidens an 8 out of 10 for writing and language and a 6 out of 10 for story. Like I say, I think things like character development and the way the author used prose as well as the way the author used theme are the most enjoyable things here. In terms of scares, I'm going to give The Rust Maidens a 7 out of 10. It's not particularly scary, although I will say that there are gory parts and creepy parts and a lot of parts that horror fans will enjoy, but I don't think that this is a novel that just horror fans will enjoy. I think people that don't necessarily love a lot of horror stuff will still be interested in this book. And finally, I'm going to give The Rust Maidens a 7 out of 10 for my personal score. I was left with some mixed feelings, but overall I really enjoyed my experience with the book and thought it was really interesting and I really look forward to more work from this author. Alright you guys, so that is it for my book talk today. Thank you as always for watching. If you like the video, go ahead and give it a like and let me know in the comments below if you've read The Rust Maidens or if you're interested in reading The Rust Maidens. And let me know as well, I'm officially looking for YA horror recommendations. I want to read more books like this. So if you guys have a favorite, please let me know and if you want me to read it and review it. Also please let me know, all that good stuff. And if you're new here, go ahead and hit subscribe. I will be here doing books like this and scary kids book reviews for the foreseeable future. So yeah, anyway, off to the races and I'll talk to you guys very soon. Thanks again for watching the video and until next time, happy reading.